Hey YouTube, and thanks for watching Junkworks Garage. Well, I just got done changing all the different fluids in that thing. And depending on what you watched, I'm going to have all the rest on my Razor playlist in my channel. Well, we're here in front of the front gear case or transaxle, whatever you want to call it. I think it's called a gear case in the book. And uh, a lot of people tell you, which is fine, grab a pick, get in here and clean this out. But yet again, although I may put this in my kit, um, I didn't have a pick in my kit. So if you don't have a pick with you, a small Allen key, Allen wrench, whatever you want to call it. You can throw that in there. There's smaller ones too, which might be even a little better. But, uh, and get those cleaned out really good. In fact, since I am here and I do have some brake clean, I'm just going to go ahead and spray some of that in there and just make sure we got everything as good as we possibly can. Well, I tell you, it's like somebody jammed something in there. It's kind of weird. All right. So, that doesn't look great, to be honest. We are going to look for what appears now to be an Allen key head. And I'm not sure if that's if it originally was that or not. Because it looks like an 8mm right there. And you're not going to get in here with this in this direction. You definitely have to go this way. So in that case... We shall try this. Yet again, I'm trying to use tools that are in the box that I will be bringing with me. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And basically I'm just using the crescent wrench here because it's got a pretty wide handle. Make sure that's in there. I will have a hammer with me as well. So maybe I'll make sure that's in there too. And we're going to see what happens here. Oh my goodness, this is really tight. And it doesn't, they don't need to be that tight. Uh, I'm going to end up stripping it. So, this time I am going to try and find a bigger, badder tool here. So, I got to figure this out. Well, as usual, all I got to do is turn off the camera and it'll break loose. So I found this 8mm right here that was even better than the rest, I guess. And yet again, just tapped it in there and messed with it. Then I grabbed a different uh, crescent wrench I had that was a little bit longer but smaller here. And it popped loose. So, unfortunately, I didn't get it on camera, but if I left the camera on, I probably never got it. So, now, we can take this out and probably replace it. Because I really don't want to put this back in here and do this again. I don't know. This was definitely does not need to be that tight. It's a, there should be an O-ring on this which I'm sure I'll have to replace as well. You should only snug them down. Do they maybe rattle in and tighten up? I don't know. But that definitely should not have been that tight. I'm going to stick this 8mm in my toolkit because it worked. Yeah, see they, they bung that O-ring up. Squished all the way in on one side. Anyhow, we're going to set that aside for now, see how much it is to get another one. And I'm going to stick my little pinky in there, if I can. And I'm not seeing a whole lot. Okay, and I'm sticking the flashlight in there. And 
there's some in there but it doesn't look like it's overflowing some in there yeah it's in there but uh I would say it probably needs a little bit more and once again now we're down underneath here got this up in the air yet again you need to be responsible for your own safety put what jack stands and stuff you think you need underneath yours underneath yours i'm gonna hit that a little bit there i am actually gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of penetrating lube up in there probably should have done that and let it sit for a while but quite honestly I was just gonna check the fluids and because they're a little bit low and I don't know when these were done last I know it's probably been more than a year um, I'm going to just break down go get some fluids now speaking about fluids I've been kind of dreading this part because of the expense of it we got the eight millimeter yet again it, I don't know if these I, these must just be eight millimeter uh, Allen heads. Ouch! That went right up in there. Now yet again, I got my wrench here and i don't know that that this one feels like it went up in there a little better than the last one so that feels pretty good we're gonna see if we can pop this loose and it's not wanting to pop loose and i'm gonna actually use the wrench that i have here and pull against this first of all there we go and keep your fingers out of there all right that came loose fairly uneventfully now I'm gonna this also I believe has an o-ring in it got my bucket down underneath if you can't see that pushing up pushing up and pulling out yeah I don't know what that's supposed to look like it doesn't look horrible but it looks like it's been a while and quite honestly i have this up on a jack and it's not very level so i'm actually going to bring it down so it's down more level i'm not sure if there's a yep there is a magnet there's definitely quite a bit of goobers on the bottom of this you're gonna get some I don't see any real big chunks of anything which is good so you want to clean that off there this also has an o-ring now I went ahead and put a different o-ring on there I got this Harbor Freight kit and it says it's imper imperviable can't say that word impermeable uh, to all the different things including oils and thing heats and temperatures and all that stuff it's they're supposed to be good we'll see or not whether or not they will work for this but well the one I put on here was 11.8 by 2.4 millimeter it's the p12 in the kit it does look slightly smaller than the one that came off here but the other one seemed to slightly too big and i'd rather it be a little bit snug probably so you and i will both see whether or not i was correct in my sizing here and uh, if not then you'll know you need to go buy one now these do not have to be reefed on in fact if i see a little bit of a drip or something like that then I can always snug it up more but if I snug it up too much you wind up screwing up that o-ring a little bit so I'm just gonna take that and I'm just gonna use a small wrench and give it 
a bit of a snug and that's all I'm going to do right there. If I see drips yet again, then I will worry about it later. Now I need to go to the store, buy a new fill plug and some oil. Now this is supposed to take that demand drive. I've been kind of looking up, down and sideways to see if I could find something cheaper or more cost effective and it is, does seem like most people say you should use the demand drive in this particular rig especially. So I'm going to be doing that for this time. I may down the line figure out if there's a better option that's maybe more cheap. So here we are. Uh, took the plug out here. We put that plug back in and it is time to put some fluid in. Now in the front here I am going to go ahead and use the diamond drive fluid. Um, everybody says for the most part pretty much everybody that even changes fluids rather than using Polaris stuff tend to say just use the Polaris stuff. This will get like four or five uh, runs out of it before I run out of it. This was 21 bucks at the Polaris place which I think actually on Amazon it was $19.99 so unfortunately the guy I called didn't have the right information on how much it was but too little too late I went ahead and grabbed it because I just want to get this done but definitely go on Amazon if you want this stuff for a little bit less. I got this right here um, it's just like a this is a cheap tool that you can buy I've used this for gear oil but I pretty much it's cleaned out pretty good I don't think there's anything left in it I kind of cleaned it out and anyway that just screws right on there it, this comes with a long straw and a short straw obviously the short straw works for this I got it setting on a table below here and I can just take this we got to actually prime it Then stick it in there and uh, pump away until it starts dripping out of the hole here. I don't want to do too much. Oh, I just saw a little bit come out. Yep, we're at the top now, so I don't want to put any more than I have to in there because I want this to last. And then I tend to open up the bottle, try not to get it, let it out of here. And I'll lift up the lid and actually let this kind of go back down inside and uh, clean it out. And when it quits flowing, that's actually where you want to be. You don't want to fill it up until it's pouring out and then quickly put this in. You want to just wait. Now, Here's this. Sadly, because somebody over tightened it last time and screwed over me, we ended up getting a new bolt or a new fill plug, I should say. That's a $41 part at Polaris. I'm sure it's less money somewhere else, but I kind of got guilted into buying it to some extent because I brought all the fluid, had him grab all the fluids, and then he gave me a price of what everything was going to cost and I literally almost had a heart attack. You know what? This is not going in here either. This better be the right one. I will take it back if it's not. Anyway, about had a heart attack said, so yeah, forget that. And uh, then he went ahead and told me about that I should go on some forums and look at fluid stuff because fluids are not that expensive. Or shouldn't be that expensive. I tell you what, this does not really feel like it wants to go in very well. So I'm wondering if somebody cross threaded this thing in here. I'm going to put the old one back in and see if it's doing the same thing here. Yeah, that's going in fine. So either the threads on this aren't the right threads 
or this was cross threaded it really doesn't look too bad it's almost wondering if this is messed up I'm gonna try it one more time here it kind of goes in but it's definitely tighter than I would want it I don't want to overdo it and not be able to bring it back yeah I don't know what's going on but this I'm thinking the guy probably cross threaded this one in I tell you what I'm gonna go get my money back I'm gonna put this old one back in and I'm just not gonna tighten it down all that rough you shouldn't lose a lot of fluid out of there with that o-ring I might double up the o-ring and uh, snug it up there I'm gonna go grab another o-ring and double up my o-ring here yet again this is one of those things you need to choose what you want to do I'm not responsible if you mess anything up and uh, based on my information but I will say it was a 2011 model I'm not going to dump a bunch of money into it I will do it as right as I can but only to an a point I'm gonna go ahead and yet again double ring this put this in see what happens you know it could be a fiasco I will definitely keep an eye on it as I'm riding down the trail but this yet again does not have to be reefed on it just needs snug down and if you can do it with this in it's probably about all you need all right I'm gonna call that and we're gonna keep an eye on it see if we see any leaks or anything like that uh, and then I'm gonna take some brake clean and hose down here a little bit there's all the fluids in this rig so hopefully you enjoyed that yet again um, separating these videos so depending on whatever fluid you just watched I got every other one on my playlist in my razor playlist so go check that out on my channel now get out there and get your junk working thanks for watching junk works garage where i'm proud to say i'm a jack of all and master of none you all have a good one